everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining me again. My name is Pat McNulty. I work for the Diocese of Columbus in the Office of Evangelization. I'm so excited that you have said yes to sharing your faith with others and so excited that you're here to learn more about how to do that. Let's start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, thank you for the gift of faith that you have given to each and every one of us. Lord, we pray for all of those who you are calling us to share our faith with. Pray that their hearts would be open to receiving your message and pray that they would choose to make you the center of their lives. We ask this all in your name. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Awesome. All right. So remember last class we talked about win, build, and send. And we talked about the vision behind those. Today we're going to start to pivot to talking about uh, the more practical sense of each one of those things. So what do I actually do during the win? What do I actually do during build and send? All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So remember the win stage. We'll start there. Win stage is everything that happens from us meeting someone to helping them say yes to having Christ as the center of their life. This is kind of a big stage and the bulk of work is done within this stage. Um, so the first step in this stage is meeting people. There's a lot of different ways to meet people. Maybe you already know people that you, you already yeah, have worked with. The best people to start a new Bible study with are people that you already know. It might be difficult or challenging because it's hard sometimes to think about sharing our faith with our friends. Uh, but these are people that already know you and already trust you. And so it actually will save you a lot of time because instead of building all new relationships, you'll actually already have those relationships established and you can start to progress a little quicker. If you're not in a position where you're going to share your faith with your friends, that's totally okay. There's plenty of different ways to meet people and share with them the good news of Jesus Christ. All right, so the first step in meeting, um, there's a lot of different things that you can do. Right, You can work with your pastor on ways to be able to advertise to the parish. Right, One thing is don't assume that just because someone already goes to church, don't assume that that means that they have already given their entire selves to Christ. Right? People can still be present at church, still go there, maybe even weekly, but still have other things at the center of their life. This might just be a small portion of what they do. So these people are definitely people we want to share the faith with. Uh, maybe you know people at work who maybe have expressed an interest um, in learning more about faith, and you can tell them um, that you're doing something for that. Uh, maybe it's just someone random that you meet, whoever it may be. Um, there's plenty of different ways to meet people. And coming up with a game plan for doing that is crucial um, because it's definitely the easiest thing to overlook. Um, and it, it's hard to get off the ground if you don't meet people. So you have to have a plan for how am I going to meet people? Where am I going to do it? And what is my pace going to be? When am I actually trying to start study? Am I starting my Bible study in a month? Great, then that gives me a month to meet people. Am I starting it in two months? That gives me two months. So really pacing yourself on how often you need to be meeting people. Another big piece of advice I have for the win is start with something that's enticing. People love food, so food is a great thing to do. Um, but do something fun, um, whether it's eating a meal together, going out and doing something together. Um, starting off there, don't feel the need to rush, right? Um, a lot of people have really slow conversion stories, and that's totally okay. So don't feel the need to rush. Don't feel the need to be presenting them with the gospel the first time you see them. Um, welcome them into a relationship with you and with the other people in the study. Um, and at first, you might not even invite someone to a Bible study. Maybe you have a Bible study going on, or maybe you're planning on having one in the future, um, and you just met someone. Well, maybe you should just invite them over for dinner, or just invite them to do something with you. Um, you don't need to invite someone to Bible study the first time that you meet them. You know, spend that time getting to know them, and then as you grow and build in trust with them, then you can make that invitation to a Bible study. Um, yeah, spend time with people in your study outside of normal Bible study time as well. I know that's hard because everyone's so busy these days, but really growing in that relationship is key. So whether it's grabbing a quick coffee or you know, maybe you can sync up your lunch breaks with someone and be able to just eat your lunches together, just to grow in that relationship, that really makes a huge difference so that when you get to Bible study, there's already kind of that trust that's built and the friendship that's built. Um, that's the most important thing. Continuing to build trust and friendship is key to the win stage. Um, over time, then you'll know to invite someone into your Bible study. So maybe start your Bible study now um, if you have a couple people interested, and then you can invite more people in as time goes on. Or maybe wait, maybe wait a few months to get it going so that you can take time to really get to know the people that you're going to hope to invite into your Bible study. Another thing to know is to be really persistent. Right? Be persistent with people in inviting them to Bible study. Um, when I worked as a campus missionary, it wasn't uncommon that I would invite someone four or more times before they would finally come once. 
and then they'd come once and then they wouldn't come back for another couple of weeks and that's okay. Just always be inviting them, always let them know that they're welcome and eventually maybe they say yes. So be persistent in those invitations. And then finally, remember to introduce them to the person of Christ. A lot of times in this first stage, you know, there's so many cool things about the church that we want to talk about. Like, gosh, it's so cool that we use incense at mass, or it's so cool that um, the priest wears this color on this day for that reason, whatever it may be. There's so many different things that our church has that are so cool to learn. But this stage is essential to learn about who is Jesus. That's the most important thing that people want to know. Once people get to know that, then all those other things start to take on a new light and become even cooler. But when we rush and put those other things ahead uh, of knowing Jesus, then our faith gets really stagnant. Um, we start to think that our faith is really just knowledge about different things, and we really lose sight that the core of our faith is relationship. So start by helping people to grow in relationship with Christ. Present them with the gospel message. There's plenty of Bible studies. A great one is called The Crux from Focus. I'll mention that again when we get to the How to Lead a Study class. But that is a Bible study literally just focused on the kerygma, what Father Ricardo was talking to y'all about. So that is huge to be able to present that essential message of the gospel. Um, other things that you can teach are just, yeah, read through the gospels. Um, look at the stories of Jesus performing miracles. Really start to introduce people to Christ and who he was and what he did. Um, you'll find that many people have kind of this abstract vision of Jesus that they've picked up from culture, but actually reading scripture and diving into it, they'll see a whole new side of Christ that they maybe didn't know was actually there. Um, another huge thing that you can do during this stage is share your own story, right? Everyone wants to know what is going to make me happy. That's really what motivates the vast majority of people. Pretty much all people um, are motivated by what is going to make me happy. Well, the reality is that you're probably a happy person because you have your faith, right? I hope you are, at least. If not, um, definitely keep praying and, and yeah, keep pursuing the Lord. Um, but the Lord is the only thing that can satisfy us truly and wholeheartedly and deeply. So the Lord wants to, yeah, wants to show how joyful life is with Him. So many people today think that religion is just boring, that you have to give up all the fun parts of your life, that you know, you just have to become kind of this old, boring church, yeah, church going guy or gal that, yeah, just doesn't have a personality. So show them your personality, show them how much joy and how much fun you have, and show them that Jesus is at the center of that, that your joy is not something separate from your faith, but yeah, the faith really gives you that joy. So learn to share your story really well. Um, a good way of thinking about that is, what was my life like before I had really given my whole heart to Christ? How did that that conversion happened? What happened that led me to that place where I wanted to give Christ my heart? And then now that I have given Christ my heart, how is my life different? Um, focusing on those three points and building the story around that can really help people to see, okay, wow, if I become more faithful, I'm not just going to become boring and lame. I can actually become really fun and really cool. Um, so that's the win stage. Really help people to come to know Christ. Um, as we pivot, then you'll start to share with people that essential gospel message. I mentioned there's a Bible study that is entirely formed around this. There's so many different videos you can watch. Show them the Father Ricardo videos that uh, we watched during these classes. Those are all great ways of presenting the initial gospel message. Um, this is key because every person is called to respond to that message, right? That is the core of our faith and responding yes to Christ um, and entering back into a relationship with him uh, through his salvation and redemption. That is the core of our faith. So that message needs to be present. Um, but also know that this is something that a lot of times needs to be repeated over and over and over again. Someone might hear this message and might just go over their heads the first time. Maybe they start to think about it the second time. Maybe they realize they're being asked a question the third time. And by the fourth time, maybe they're ready to say yes or no. Um, so really remember that this is something that you have to be persistent with um, and, and just help to continue to let this message sink in with people because um, this is the core of the faith. And you can never really go anywhere without the core being in place. So that's really crucial and that's really key. Uh, but I encourage you as you get to this stage to actually sit down with people one-on-one -on -one and talk to them about this. Talk to them about how Jesus created them uh, to be in relationship, how sin ruined that, how they now have a choice to move forward in that relationship because Christ came for them, right? And actually present them with that choice. Say, do you want to accept Jesus into your life? Do you want Jesus to be the core of your life? Um, present them with that question so they know that they're being asked something. 
All right, so now as we move from win into build, this becomes the next stage. So most of your time will be spent in, will, in the win stage, the next in the build. Um, and so really, if we look at kind of Acts chapter two um, as kind of our model for this. So Acts chapter two, all of these people are converting over to the faith, right? The, the uh, disciples had just received the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Uh, Peter goes out, preaches to thousands of people. They all can hear him in their own language, even though they're from all over. And then thousands of people convert. And they establish their life around four key things, the four key principles of living as a Christian. And that's prayer, fellowship, the teaching of the apostles, and the breaking of the bread or sacraments. Right? And so teaching people about these four things is what's really essential to uh, the build stage. Right? So for prayer, right, we have that little book that I showed you last time from Focus that has really good resources on learning how to pray and also learning about what good fellowship is and how to establish that within your life. Um, there's actually articles in that book about all four of these points. So a great place to start is taking that book and just walking through them, uh, walking through that with them. And again, if you don't have the book, all those resources are free online uh, at focus.org or focus equip. Um, so you can find all of those. So really use um, this time to be able to help them grow in these four things. And this will come mainly through the vehicle of a small group or one on one time. Um, so going through these discipleship articles, talking about these key points, um, also asking them, hey, what's holding you back? Or what do you feel you don't know? Or what do you feel you're not prepared with yet? Um, so really catering what you're teaching them to what they feel they need um, is huge here. Um, now you might think, gosh, I don't have that much time to lead a Bible study and be meeting up regularly with people um, outside of that. And that's totally okay. There's a couple options for how to do this if that's the case. The first is if everyone in your Bible study is progressing faithfully at the same kind of rate, you can actually just transition your Bible study and say, we're going to meet at the same time, do kind of the same thing, but now the, the topics will become a little more focused. Um, we're going to start learning a little bit more about how to live the Christian life. So the message will be less, what is Christianity? And we'll move towards how to live as a Christian. Um, so you can do that. You can also try to find someone who can take over your Bible study um, so that you can help, yeah, just help these other people grow. There's plenty of options. So if you're running into problems, just get creative and think about how can I maximize my time and make sure that people are really growing the whole way through. And a huge point of the build stage is encouragement and accountability. Every person is starting off in really a new life. Even if they've um, kind of been living the Christian life half-heartedly for most of their life, as they say yes to Christ, this is giving them new zeal, new vigor to live out this lifestyle. And so really encouraging them in that and having high accountability for them in these first stages is huge. Um, the devil really doesn't want people to become faithful. So it's really common that they'll start to di get discouraged over time because the devil is trying to push discouragement on them to stop them from moving forward. So be that encourager that can lift them up and help them move forward. And then accountability is huge as well. When someone's maybe starting off a prayer life, that's a habit. And it's sometimes hard to establish daily habits, no matter what they are. And so helping them by saying, hey, what time are you going to pray this week? Um, can I check in with you and make sure that you did it? Um, can I text you maybe once or twice a week and say, hey, did you pray? How's your prayer life going? Just those types of things to help people have those constant reminders are huge. So those are yeah, the keys to living in the build stage. Now we start to transition into the send stage. And again, the transition here is something we call a high call. Again, there's an article about this in that little blue book from Focus or on their website. Um, that will help you walk through that. Even just reading through that article with someone will help them understand what's going on. But you also don't have to use that book necessarily. The key to this is helping them understand that they are called to live mission. That part of them being a baptized Christian is sharing their faith and that they are called to help others to grow as well. Um, in fact, the church originally was founded um, as the people who are called out of the world so that we may help the world. Right, Ecclesia, that was the original for, no, uh, name for the church. It means those who are called out. So as you become more ingrained in your faith, you get more called out of the world, but not so that you can live apart or separate from others. You're called out of the world so that you can become a missionary to show the world what the love of Christ looks like. So make sure that people understand you are called to mission. And from there, providing them with training, whether it's referring them to these videos, um, the Focus book actually has a lot of good articles on how to lead as well. Um, so whatever form it may take, just providing them with opportunities to grow and actually learn the practicals of how to live. 
So thank you so much for joining. Uh, we've been talking about the practical components of the three stages of someone's faith life, win, build, and send, and how to help them during those stages. Gosh, God is good, and He loves us all so much, and He loves everyone um, that is going to um, be walking with you in your Bible study. A priest I used to know, uh, he always would say, God loves you so much that He doesn't want to leave you where you are. Right? God wants to love these people that are going to be in your Bible study and lead them to the next stage of their life. Because as we progress, we come to know Him more, come to fall in love with Him more, and come to be fulfilled more, because that's truly what we were created for. So thank you again for joining. It's been such an honor and a blessing, and I look forward to continuing our time and continuing to talk about uh, just the key elements of being a great missionary disciple. Thank you so much.